Hi there, welcome to the Cosmic Classroom. Today we are going to talk about parallax. But before talking about parallax, I need to briefly explain to you what are angular sizes, what's an arc second, what's an arc minute. So let's start with that before we move into parallax. Um, if you would see my first slide, right here, right there, on we, we have a full circle. And as you know, a full circle contains 360 degrees. Now imagine just looking at one of these 360 degrees. It would be something very small. So you can't even see that it's a pie shape here because it's a little, really small pie shape. So one degree is a pretty small angle. However, objects in the sky are so small that they actually appear smaller than that. The moon and the sun are the only things that appear to be one degree across. For that reason, we need to subdivide the degree even further. So we'll get this, this one degree, zoom way in, and subdivide this degree into 60 equal parts. Each one of those parts will be called an arc minute. So there are 60 arc minutes in one degree. But objects are still bigger than one arc minute in general. So we need to subdivide that even further. We subdivide one arc minute, which you couldn't possibly see here, into 60 equal uh, parts again. And each one of those we call one arc second. So there are 60 arc seconds in one arc minute. This angular distance is important because we can measure both the size of objects in the sky according to the angle that it takes the angle that it takes in the sky but we can also measure distances between different objects in the sky so we'll get to that a little bit more let's see why is it that that's important so for example imagine a flower the angular size of a flower the angular size is given by this angle right here we use angular size when we don't know the distance Therefore, all we can say is how big does it appear? So this angle here is the angular size of the flower when it's far away. And the bigger angle is the, the angular size of the flower when it's close to you. You can try it yourself. Get your thumb, put right in front of your face, and try to cover me in your screen. See if you can cover me. All right? You probably won't be able to because it's far from you. So the angular size of your thumb is pretty small because it's far from you. Now if you get it closer and closer and closer to your face, you'll see that the angular size will increase. Your thumb will be able to cover my entire face, maybe a good part of the screen. So the angular size became bigger. Things are closer, the angular size are bigger. So the angular size tells you something about the distance from us or from the observer, in this case your eyes, to the object. So you can use that to measure, measure distances in the sky. You can use your, your little finger to measure about one arc minutes. If you get three fingers, you, you are measuring about five arc minutes. A whole fist closed, you would be measuring right here, um, right there, about 10 arc minutes, and if you do your fingers like this, it's about 15 arc minutes. So you can use this to measure distances between stars in the sky. So for example, you can observe the Big Deeper, and let's say you want to show that to your significant other. You're trying to impress them. But the only star that you can show in the Big Deeper is this one right here. Well, you can help them find the star by saying, well, the other star is about 10 arc minutes from us. So just look 10 arc minutes, um, 10 arc minutes east and you should be able to see it. So, so you, can use that, you can use angular measurements to measure distances between objects. Now let's understand why is it that this is important for parallax. So parallax is a method used to the measure distance to nearby objects. When an object is close enough to you, you will see it against a different background depending on where you see that object from. So here is the Earth orbiting the Sun. So let's say here is the Earth um, at, in June, right? So here's the Earth in June. If you observe this star right here, it will be, across, it will be 
in front of a certain background of stars. If you take a picture for, of this star, it will look like this. However, if you wait six months, and now it's December, and you take a picture of that same star, it will appear against a different background. So it will appear as the star moved. It really hasn't moved, but it appears to, uh, to your eye as it has moved. And again, you can try it. So put your thumb again in front of your face and close one of your eyes. As you close one of your eyes, try to notice what's behind your finger. Behind my finger is the camera. Now I'll, cut, I'll now blink the other eye and you'll notice that your, uh, your thumb will appear to have moved with respect to the background. So do that a few times. Your thumb hasn't really moved. It's just that you're seeing from the, with the right eye or you're seeing with the left eye. So it appears to have moved. How much it appears to have moved depends on how close or far away this finger is from you. If the finger is very far away from you, it will be together with this background and it will not appear to have moved. Another example of parallax can be seen every day. Take a picture of a building. You may want to change your angle, right? Just reposition yourself to take a better picture. So in this case, this is just moving a few steps to the side. You see how the, the post and the bench appear to move their positions. While the things that are in the background, like the buildings, they remain in the same place. Nothing has really moved, but this apparent motion tells you about how far away you are from this post. Going back to the stellar parallax, if you want a little bit of math to go with it, the distance is related to this angle called parallax, which is this angle right there. So the distance is simply 1 over the parallax angle. But, the, but this formula holds if the distance to the star is given in parsecs, and I'm sorry that it cut here, but it's in parsecs, and the parallax angle is one arc seconds. That's actually the definition of a parsec. A star that appears to move one arc second in the sky has, is at a distance of one parsec. That was how we defined a parsec. So one parsec is the distance from us to an object that has a parallax angle of one arc second, and it happens to be also 3.26 light years. I hope that helped, and let me know if you have any more questions. See you next time.